Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the School of Science and this is the post-match for Leeds v Everton. Leeds 2, Everton 2. I'll be honest, this was a rather peculiar game to say the least. Everton played really well, Leeds played very well. Leeds also played rather nastily. Now when it comes to Leeds, I always knew them as a rather endurance focused team they like to go 100 percent from the first minute all the way through to the last i didn't really know that their back line used to be as physical as it is i mean granted last season no fans and everything they were a very different kettle of fish but watching this game today the thing that did come to my mind was jesus christ these defenders really like roughing up people now if you're wondering what i'm on about Within the first, I think it was around 20, 30 minutes, we had a penalty. Now, this penalty could have gone awry if it wasn't for VAR. So thank you very much, VAR, for that one. So we had a cross come in. Dominic Calvaloon was about to put a foot or a head to it, but he was being held back by Cooper. Now, if it wasn't for the protests of the players who said, hang on, he was held back because he was held both by his arm and by his shirt. So he was literally being dragged back with his arm and shirt. If it wasn't for our players actually, you know, throwing the fit at the referee, I don't think that penalty would have went ahead. Because if it wasn't for that, he was more than ready to just let the game carry on. But thankfully, that wasn't the case. We were able to get a penalty, and Dominic Calvillon was able to net it rather sublimely. As the game went on as well, Leeds started getting into their own and Everton started getting into their own. It was pretty much becoming a bit of end-to-end -end football, which was really nice to see. We were doing a lot of pushing. We were pushing at them, they were pushing at us, and they pushed to an extent that it caused Luca Dean and Michael Keane to do subsequent errors, which led to a goal. Now, am I going to completely blame either of them? Not really. It's kind of 6-1 off and the other. If Luca Dean was able to have gotten a little bit more of a connection, it would have either went out or it would have went back upfield for Everton to try and pick up and collect. However, once Luca Dean had made that error and the ball went where it was in the area of Michael Keane, Michael Keane should have got a stab at it and just tried to knock it upfield without much of a hi ho or much of an aim. But instead, he tried to shepherd around the ball, which led to a lead player pretty much just completely taking a control of it and putting it through for a goal. Now, I don't want to be on that bandwagon of screw Michael Keane, get him out the team, he's useless and all that lovely jargon. Because Michael Keane, he's a hot and cold player. He's a little bit like Jordan Pickford in some aspects. Some games he's good, some games he's bad. I mean, in all honesty, every player has a bad game. But in this situation, I feel like we should have around half time swapped him for the likes of Jared Branthwaite. A younger player who would be a lot more hungry and be a lot more willing to throw his, light, his, his body on the line to get the ball. But, in all said and done, it's in the past now. Once Ben Godfrey's back in, I'd like to see more of a Ben Godfrey, Yeri Mina back line, just because the two of them are very physical, and they are very, very active when it comes to getting the ball upfield. <sighs> now, we need to talk about the bad stuff. <laughs> well, in all honesty, I think we've covered the main parts of the bad stuff. But the one that had did come to mind was Calvert-Lewin, when it came to trying to finish, he seemed rather lacking, in my honest opinion. He was... He was going for it, granted. He was going for it. But he just wasn't really getting that right touch on it. There was a situation where he could have slotted it right into one of the corners or even chipped the keeper but instead he just launched it straight at the keeper all he would have to have done is adjust his foot and instead of launching it straight into a diagonal at the keeper he could have put it wide and it would have been an absolutely sublime goal but instead it just went straight to the keeper came off his leg and he was able to collect it but that's enough about Everton let's talk about good old dirty Leeds eh? now Leeds in this game they were fast they pretty much played 100% from the way it go, as I predicted. But 
the one thing that did come to my mind was they were very, very active when it comes to the physical aspect of football. Now, a lot of people are saying, going to probably say, oh, but this is how football is meant to be. It's meant to be a physical game. You're meant to push, pull, shove and hit each other and whatnot. Yeah, all well and good. But if we're getting fouls for it, but then no, what the hell's going on there? I mean, there was multiple occasions where Cooper basically dragged Calvert-Lewin everywhere and did the same to Richarlison. There was also a point around 35 minutes into the first half where Cooper put his arm up and launched it into the back of Richarlison's neck. That's 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 not a, a football challenge. That's just outright dangerous. Now, I might be more tempted to sort of say, oh yeah, but it's football. It was just heat of the moment. But neither of them had the ball. Neither of them were going near the ball. It was a chance that was going up and was going wide to them. But instead of, you know, both of them jumping up and not coming of it. Instead, Cooper did one of these into the back of Richardson's neck and he ends up going down because of it. Thankfully, wasn't injured. Speaking of which, I was a little bit concerned at the very beginning of the game because I saw Richardson hobbling around. So I wouldn't be surprised if he isn't featuring against Huddersfield in the Carabao Cup because... I think he might have tried to play through that injury. And as a result, he might be missing until next week. And if that's the case, that's a shame. But with all said and done, we've, we've got different players who we can put in that position who I think would be, you know, more than adequate to go into the Carabao Cup and would be definitely worthwhile getting their, giving their legs a wee stretch and seeing if they're a new potential avenue if Richards never does actually get injured for a longer term. But as a whole for this game, I would say it was a good game. I would say across the board, most players got a six. Uh, Pickford's six slash seven. He didn't have an awful lot to do in the game. Made a couple of good saves. His distribution still good, but there were a few moments where he sliced in and ends up going out or mishits it all together and just ends up catapulting the entire thing right across the length of the pitch right to the opposition's keeper which as a professional you you shouldn't really be doing that <sighs> it's been a long day my apologies about that uh, Michael Keane I'll give him a 5 he was unfortunate not to score but as a whole he made a few blunders and unfortunately it led to a goal or two I'm not going to... The second goal, I wouldn't say that was completely Michael Keane's fault. But the lack of marking inside that box was absolutely atrocious. And in all fairness, it was Michael Keane's man who got away from him. Up the field, I would say... Damari Gray, I'd give him a 7. Awobi, I would give a 7. Both of them had an absolutely solid game. They moved up and down the pitch. They were able to get some good passes in. They were able to bring it in. They were able to do a few good crosses. And Damari Gray's goal was absolutely sublime so I would actually say he's more of a 7.5 and Alex Iwobi was a 7 I would like to Corey I would give a 7 he really was playing into that number 10 role really well he was getting himself up field he was doing everything he could to get that ball into the box he was basically playing a really good box to box sort of player so I would like to see more of that so if Hamas Rodriguez goes I think I would like to Corey is going to be the person who's going to slot into that place but in situations where Hamas is not available and Decore is not available, I think Demari Gray would be, actually not even Demari Gray, I think Andros Townsend would be good in that position. So you to bring him in field and have him play in that position in the future, I would not argue against that. Alan, I'd give him a six, uh, just in regards to his general performance. He was probably out of his way, he was out of his class in this one, and I'm going to say that. He played well, he was able to get a few good challenges in, but my only gripe was the fact that he just wasn't fast enough. When he was going up against a few of their players, they were able to outrun him, even when he had a two yards advantage, which seemed a bit peculiar because normally like your, your speeds in the Premier League, it's very minute between the slow, one of the slowest and one of the fastest. It's only a couple of, a couple of miles per hour. But in this game, I felt like their fastest player was absolutely light speed in comparison to Alan. So as a whole, I feel like it's unfortunate with him. Now for our strikers, um, Calvert-Lewin and Richardson, I'm going to give them both a 6.5. 
Richarlison had a few good runs. He needs to stop going down so easily. That is my only gripe with him at the moment. He seems to be at a situation right now where if anyone goes near him or if anyone as much touches him, he goes down too easily. Now, granted, there were a few challenges on there where he did have the justification to go down because, honestly, they took the absolute legs off of him. But as a whole, I felt like Calvin Lewin and Richarlison, they, missed, they had missed opportunities where they could have you know, buried this game. But in all fairness, every player has their moments. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know, give them a lynching too much for it. It, it. They did well. They did well this game. They were just unfortunate not to put this entire thing to bed. I'm not sure whether you guys heard that. <laughs> Please disregard that. Okay. So yeah, as the whole for the team, I would say it is around a 6, 6.5 in that game. We were unfortunate not to get the win. But due to er errors in defence and a couple of blunders here and there, sadly, we have to settle for a draw. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked it, please leave a like down below. It just shows me that you like what I'm doing and you want to see more of it. Also, if you want to suggest anything to the channel, please put something in the comment section down below. I don't mind what it is. If you want to suggest something to the channel, if you want to just pass a comment or you just want to say, come on, you blues or up the toffees. I always love seeing comments down there. It really helps me get through the days. Also, if you are new to the channel, there's a little subscribe button down there. Hit that and don't forget to hit the bell just because that means that you will get notifications for these videos. Just bear in mind, the YouTube algorithm is a very strange little mistress. If it likes what you're doing, it's going to promote you to the absolute heavens. But if you fall ever so slightly out of alignment, then you will not get any videos pushed through. That's why the bell icon's there. It just helps people who actually like what I'm doing see everything as soon as it comes out. Also, I would like to say a huge thank you to all my patrons. I do not know which side they'll be on. Actually, no, they're going to be on this side. They're going to be on this side. So I'd like to say a big thank you to CT Baz being the ongoing patron. If you want to be like CT Baz and you want to get your name over here on the right, then why not go onto my Patreon? We have got two tiers. We've got the cup of coffee tier, which is literally just one pound a month. It is the metaphorical sense of saying, I like what you do, dude. Get a cup of coffee on me. The three pound tier is what I call the school, school of science super fan. School of science super fan. I need to rename that just because it is a tongue twister in its own right. But being part of the SOS super fan, that just means that you really, really like what I'm doing. And you want just a little bit more of it. And not too much more, not like a massive bowl more. It's just a nice little bit more. So what normally happens is on Patreon, I will post like little bits and bobs here. So normally when I'm editing, when I've just done filming, when I've thrown something out there for people to, you know, sort of have a look at and see, pass their opinion on, those sorts of things get passed out into Patreon. And anyone who sees them on Patreon will be able to give me feedback. And they're considered a little bit more of a priority. But in any case, guys, I would like to thank you all so much for watching. And I'm going to see you all in the next video. Peace.